one of the very important aspect of interval estimation is the critical value. Critical values help us to calculate the margin of error. So it's a factor used to compute the margin of error given in the following formula. When critical value is multiplied by the standard error, critical value is also known as a reliability coefficient, which is determined by some probability distribution, which our estimator follows. Critical values are specific to the type of test and the significance level alpha. With the change in the signif significance level, the critical value will be changed. As well as, it all depends upon the estimators we are trying to estimate the interval estimator for. If the, interval esti is, if the estimator follows the normal probability distribution, we use the relevant distribution, that is the normal probability distribution, to calculate this critical value and similarly for other distributions. Alpha defines the sensitivity of the test. It is a value that implies that the null hypothesis is rejected. And if this value is 5% that is usually been kept, then it means that 5% of the time the null hypothesis is going to be rejected when it is in fact true. The choice of alpha is somewhat arbitrary. Although in practice, we use values like 0 0.01, 0 0.05, and 0 0.10. When the sampling distribution of statistics is normal or nearly normal, the critical value can be expressed as a z-score or a t-score. Then it comes to the, the calculation of the critical value. While we are calculating this critical value, the very first step, we have to define alpha, where alpha equals to one minus confidence level divided by 100. Then in the ne next step, we find the critical probability, which is p star, it equals to one minus alpha by two. And in the third step, to express the critical value as a z-score, we find the z-score having a cumulative probability equal to the critical probability, p star. Let us assume our estimator follows a normal probability distribution. And to compute 100 into 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval, we first need to compute the critical value for the standard normal distribution denoted as z alpha by 2. If our estimator's distribution is not standard normal, but in fact it's normal, then we can easily convert it into the standard normal by subtracting our random variable from its mean and then dividing it by its standard deviation. Or if it's an estimator, then mean of an estimator should be subtracted and it should be divided by its standard error. Here's the table of the standard normal cumulative distribution function. Let's say we want to look at the critical value at alpha to be 0 0.05 or we say at 95% confidence interval. At 95% confidence level, alpha turn out to be 0 0.05 and half of it will be 0 0.025. Within our table, we locate that at which location 0 0.025 is located and once we have observed this value we look at the z value z score value corresponding to it and it is minus 1.96 hence the critical value at two tailed alpha to be 0 0.05 which is in fact alpha by 2 0 0.025 will be 1.96 the minus sign or the plus sign denotes that which dimension of the curve we are looking it at. Similarly, if one is conducting to find out the critical value onto the right tail of the distribution, it should cover 97.5% area under the curve. So 
0.975 should be the value that one should look for. So at 5% level of significance for two-tailed distribution, when we are going to look at the right-tailed critical value, we will look at 0.975 within the table and 0.975 goes right here. Hence, the value z-score corresponds to this value will be 1.96. Hence, the right-tailed critical value for the normal probability distribution will be 1.96. Values of z-alpha by 2 for the most commonly used confidence levels are when the confidence level is 90%, our alpha will be 0 0.10, which will be 10%, and alpha by 2 will be 0 0.05, which will be 5%. In the table, we will look up the area 0 0.95, which will be equivalent to 1.645. Similarly, for 95% that we have just done, for 95% confidence level, alpha to be equal to 0 0.05, whereas half of the alpha will be equal to 0 0.025 that will make us to look up to the area that is 0 0.975 which will be at 1.96 z value similarly for 99 percent confidence level alpha to be one percent that is 0 0.01 alpha by two will be 0 0.005 which will allow us to look up for the area that is nine zero point nine nine five zero which will be at 2.576. So these are the most commonly used critical values for the normal probability distribution. And especially when we conduct uh, a statistical inference and interval estimate for such an estimator whose sampling distribution follows a normal probability distribution. The other probability distribution that, could, that our random variable could follow will be a T distribution. For the t distribution, we have the critical values for t table. Using this table, one, on one side, we have degrees of freedom given, and the top two rows will talk about either it is a two-tailed test or it is a one-tailed test. Most of the time, when we are looking at the confidence interval, we look at the values at a two-tailed because we want to find out lower confidence limit as well as upper confidence limit. But sometimes if our interest is only in looking into the upper confidence limit or only looking into the lower confidence limit, that's when we will look into the one-tailed test. And the same goes for any of other tests as well. Here, if we want to look at the critical value for the t-distribution, for a two-tailed test with 5% level of significance and at degree of freedom 11. We will look up into the degree of freedom 11 and two tail test 5% and the value corresponds to it will be 2.201. Similarly, for the chi-square distribution, that if our variable of interest follows the chi-square distribution and we want to find out the critical values of chi-square distribution. We'll follow the similar method because chi-square distribution also has one parameter, that is its, its degrees of freedom. And if we want to look at the value at 5% significance level at, and 5 degrees of freedom, the value turn out to be 11.070. And that will help us to identify this critical value. Similarly, the other distribution that's most commonly used is F distribution. F distribution will have two degrees of freedom. That first one is called new one and other one is new two. At 5% significance level, we will look at new one value to be five and new two value to be five and the critical value turn out to be 5.05. .05. And one should pro follow the same process, but for specifically for F distribution, we always we will find a separate table for 5% significance level, similarly a separate table for 10% significance level or 1% significance level and so on. When the sample size is large, let's say greater than 30, though it's not the rule, it does not make much difference if we use the Z-score or T-score to compute the critical value. 
Both approaches will yield similar results. Strictly speaking, when the population's standard deviation is unknown and sample size is small, the t-distribution is a preferred distribution. Thank you.